and it was Pat. That was the year Dave Robinson came out of the um, out of the, the Naval Academy. Mm-hmm. So everybody in L.A. wanted to see Dave Robinson. He was the Michael Jordan back then. He was yeah. the the new guy coming in. Mm-hmm. Coming he was the, the best yeah. best thing. So everybody wanted to see him. So the first the first team played and lost. And the guy from Atlanta came up to me. He goes, "If you guys lose, they're gonna cut you tonight." Straight away, they're going to cut you. Yeah. I'm nervous. I'm already nervous. I'm shaking. The gym is built in Utah. There's six feet of snow. I don't have a coat. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a coat. I yeah. have no coat. So Charles Barkley, we jump in a taxi. Charles Barkley said, what? Open the door. My eyes are bloodshot. You know, I can't walk. You know, say, I'm got training. So I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm a professional. Mm-hmm. Grab my bag. Grab my shoes. I can't see, man. I'm telling you. So the, my first day of training. All righty. Well, he needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. We're going to start Hall of Famer in the NBL, two-time NBL champion, fifth all-time in a scoring as a scoring leader in the um, NBL. That wasn't good. We'll keep going. <laughs> Five-time NBL All-Star. He won uh, Finals MVP in the NBL, which we'll talk about for sure. I got a story about that too. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of stories. It's yeah. Leonard, where's my super suit Copeland? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, <all> right. <laughs> That's funny. How you doing, Leonard? Talk to us. I'm good, man. Good to be here. You guys are all happy. You had your McDonald's. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all good, hyped man. up. Good. Yeah. Big game meal. Yeah. yeah. You can't be telling the audience. Okay, yeah, my yeah. bad, bro. My bad. Hey, we, <laughs> eat, we eat healthy over food. We're talking about that. We're saying you look like Rajan Rondo. I look Kevin Garnett, Rajan Rondo, <laughs> uh, Super, what's his name? Frozone. Frozone. Yeah. I look like everybody. <laughs> everybody. Yeah, you get it a, a lot then. I get it a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do. All right, yeah. let's take this from the start of your journey. So, if I'm not mistaken, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. How was it ra- being born, like, spending your childhood in those areas? Atlanta was mostly a black city. Um, but it was, and my family were middle class. Like, I was the youngest kid of six. So, all my brothers and sisters had moved out by the time I started growing up. Oh. And we had this big, massive house upstairs, downstairs. Mm. So... I don't want to say I was spoiled, but, like, my brother had a great job, and my sister, my sisters worked for a company called Sears and Roebuck, which supplied house, um, toys and, and um, furniture and that kind of stuff. So every Christmas, like, I had everything. My brother, I remember my brother bought me a motorcycle one time. Yeah. I had a, a pool table. <laughs> no, I had a pool table and a ping pong table, you know what I mean? So yeah. because I was the youngest... And my, my yeah. parents worked, but they were always helping out. You know what I mean? So I was sort of, I wouldn't say spoiled because I knew I was being looked after. Yeah. But they did the right thing by me, man. They really did, yeah. So it was easy for me to grow up in Atlanta, you know hey, what I mean? So one thing caught me. You said ping pong. Are you good? I am good. Yes, okay. Okay. And pool. Oh. I'm, 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 hey, I don't want to brag. I got you. We got I'm you. pretty hey. good at it. Hey, yeah. it's, coming, <laughs> it's, it's coming. We're going to miss you. Okay. All right. So Atlanta, growing up, it wasn't like because obviously we hear stories about Atlanta, you know, in the six, in the sixties, seventies, eighties, you know, we hear. Martin Luther King was uh, was big in Atlanta. Yeah, he was. He went to the same school as he you. He went to the same school. Okay. My mom, and, my mom and dad went to the same school, and all oh. my sisters and brothers same and time? myself. Yeah. Did your parents go same time as Martin? Yes, my mom. So high school sweethearts. I wish. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, Martin Luther King's massive. You see his statue everywhere in Atlanta, yeah. and, and the even now I saw like the. Basketball team that had the MLK jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlanta Hawks. Because you, yeah. you, you were, you were doing some research. Said you like you were born. I think two years after his "I Have a Dream" speech. Right. So you're like when there was real activism, like right. you know, growing up then. So how was it? Like Martin Luther King, just these influencers. He would see. By the time I'd grown up, though, mm. I, it really wasn't as big as yeah, it was, like was when I was later, born. Yeah. I was one and two, maybe it was big then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time I got up to elementary school, high school, I didn't really like. I said, again, I didn't see it because we lived sort of in the suburbs. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Rather and, than you know, the yeah. ghetto. Rather than the ghetto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So I didn't, I mean, my mom and dad still followed and, and made sure they did the right thing, but we, I was sort of protected from all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Which is which is good. Yeah. It's a blessing, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Your sister's name Martin? My, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no,
No, uh, um, the school was Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Booker T. Washington. Okay, yes. It was a massive, <laughs> massive, <laughs> massive school in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, and um, again, like I said, all my brothers and sisters went. And a, a right. quick story, like my, my two brothers played football and one played basketball. So at our house, we had this big mantelpiece. So they had trophies, trophies yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. And then my sister was a track star and my other sister was a cheerleader. Okay, yeah. so, so we had study. ribbons and yeah. stuff yeah. everywhere, Athletes. but I had nothing. So in high school, my junior year of high school, like for Thanksgiving, we'd all sit down at the table, mm. and my one brother that was older than, a little bit older than me, used to always tease me, when are you going to put something on the mantelpiece? When are you going to mm. get a trophy? Mm. Mm. And so my junior year in high school, I said, I'm going to try out for basketball. I liked the game. Mm. I'd play in the backyard, but I wasn't great, you know what I mean? And I tried out, and I got cut. And MJ <clears throat> so, story. Yeah. But then my, my, my senior year, I said, well, look, I got cut my junior year. I'm going to make the team my senior yeah. year. I got cut again. So I got cut twice in high school. Yeah. But yeah. realistically, I just wasn't good enough because the team was a okay. very good team. Good team. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. what age did you start, like, trying to play like play basketball or take it fairly serious? Well, I, obviously I wasn't serious enough yeah. because yeah, 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 I didn't yeah, yeah. make in the team. Probably get into it, yeah. But even yeah. just, like – But I never played – like, the first time I put on a jersey – I was in college. That's the first time I had a job. Wow. Never played oh, any so. boys' yeah. club or anything like so that. Technically, a bit late. Yeah. Very, Very late. That's, yeah. a, that's a Hakeem yeah. story. Very yeah. late. Yeah. So um, when I got cut those two years, but I played football. Yeah. Okay. So I lettered in football. I didn't play a lot, but I still lettered. You know what I mean? Football is in NFL, yeah? yeah. Yeah, NFL football. Yeah. And um, sort of. Yeah, they got a little trophy for football and stuff. And had it on the trophy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny man. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian over here, huh? <laughs> I had to ask. Because they talk about it now, like, with kids. But then in the 80s, you don't know, like, what's... You know? No, if you, you weren't good enough, you didn't get a trophy. Yeah. Now they give every kid a trophy yeah. for participating. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here with that crap. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I don't think it's the right thing, but, yeah. yeah. You, have to, you should, probably should earn... You know, but it's, yeah. like, it's like that dog mentality as well. It's like MJ has a similar story with him and his brother, like his brother was motivating the whole time to yeah. actually get mm. into the NBA and That's all that right. kind of stuff. Was that your reason why you wanted to become? Well, my brothers were, I wouldn't say the word motivating. They were being smart asses. Yeah, know? yeah. They That's like all the, the way, brothers. The way that all the brothers are like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 They pushed me to that level, though, yeah. to say, look, I'm going to. But then when I got out of high school, I started growing. Like, I remember the year I graduated and my mom was like, your pants are too short. Uh, you got to buy you some more clothes. And my shoes were getting too small. Yeah. So I shot up. And I had no idea what I wanted to do when I came out of high school. And it was like seven guys. We all hung together. Mm. And there's one friend of mine, Fred Clyde, who I grew up with. Yeah. He got a job at the Atlanta Journal Constitution, which is a newspaper plant. Mm. The Herald Sun here. Okay, he started so that's big. Okay. Yeah. So he was pushing the big roles, right? Mm. But he was... Like, and he, we, we, we had uniforms and had his name on it and had Atlanta Journal Constitution, right? Yeah. And then he got a couple of more guys on and he got me on, right? So it was seven of us working at the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Yeah. That's mad. And so, yeah, with your voice. Let, 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 me tell you why, let me tell you why I only worked there for about a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't a hard job because we were just like high school again. Yeah. All the guys hanging out. We were muck, mucking around in the, in the hallways. Mm. There were plenty of girls running around <laughs> yeah. everywhere. You know what I mean? So it was fun. <laughs> but you're getting money this time. But that's right. You're getting money. But there was this old guy came in our locker room right before we went out. We, we started at 7 o'clock every morning. And the, there was a night crew that came in. They were older guys, like real older guys. Mm. And there was this older guy that came into the locker room, and he had this gray beard and gray hair, and he barely got into the locker room. He was shuffling his way into the locker room, and he said, oh, the young boys are here today. And it was like a light came on. I, mm. I, I'm telling you now, it was like a light came on. I said, there's no way I'm going to be doing this for another 50 years. I'm not going to, I mean, mm. not, not, nothing against the job. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to be the one coming in and shuffling in in 50 years That's saying. Crazy. It's your personality. It's what you want, yeah. I went in, this is on a Monday morning. <laughs> I walked into the boss's office. Yeah. His name was Mr. Fan. I remember Mr. <laughs> Fan knocked on the door. And we were just sort of the young crew, so he didn't yeah. have much time for us. Yeah. I said, Mr. Fan, I need to talk to you. He goes, I'll, 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 I'll come by and see you in a couple of hours or something. You know, go ahead and go, go back to work. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm pushing rolls and picking up cardboard boxes and stuff, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I got to just tell Mr. Fan, I don't want to do this. Yeah, got to get out of here. But I was appreciative that he'd given me a job and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. I said not. And I didn't tell any of my boys, no mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Fan never came by. Right when we got ready to, to stop at 3 o'clock, I knocked on his door again. I said, Mr. Fan. 
I need to talk to you. He said, come on in. I said, Mr. Fan, I can't do it anymore. Uh, you know, thanks for the opportunity, but I, I, want, I want to do something else with my life. And he said, are you sure? Because I, you know, I got somebody else that will come in yeah. straight away. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But I had, still had no idea. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I remember going home that day, and my sister was at, over to visit, and my mom was there. And I said, I quit my job. My mom said, what? She said, what, what are you doing? Are you, yeah, you're yeah. not going to lay in bed all day. You know, you're not be like that. Yeah. And I said, I want to do something else. And my sister said, don't worry about it. Go back to school or something. We'll find something for you. My sister was, you know. She was she supportive. Was very supportive. Yeah. And she said, don't worry about paying for it. We'll get it up. We're going to yeah. do it. So straight away, Georgia State was a Division I school. So that's a big school, okay? Um. 30, I think it had 36,000 students or whatever. That was in the city, though. It was a concrete campus it wasn't like a grass campus yeah. georgia tech was five minutes down the street so it was georgia tech georgia state and then the university of georgia is about 45 minutes away hmm. but i was and then there was those black colleges morehouse marsh brown you know those black colleges i could have gone to but i was like nah i don't really want to go to black those. colleges what do you mean black colleges so all black, black yeah. dominated by black all people. black yeah, you yeah, say yeah. all the teachers are black the students are black yeah yeah so it's just it's uh, the reason why they're all black well, because there's a lot of black people in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And a lot of the grants go to those yeah. kids, yeah. you know, that don't that are less fortunate or whatever gotcha. to help them get to the next mm-hmm. level. So I remember like signing up and applying for, for school and I, I still didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. But but you like that first year, you just take regular classes anyway. Okay. So and you I'll, enrolled in college. I enrolled okay. in college. I'm walking through the college to have a look. Just walk, got my yeah. books with me. I'm walking through, and I open the door, and there's the gym. And I'm walking through the gym, and there's a sign on the wall that says tryouts, like on Thursday or Friday yeah. or something. This is cinematic. And then <laughs> it, it was meant to happen because yeah. the like the gym was on the third floor, and then the fourth floor had a track, and the fifth floor had a track. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm all inside. Yeah. And on the fourth floor, the coach was walking around the track. And he saw me looking at it. He goes, we're having tryouts. Next Thursday, come out. You know what I mean? <laughs> if that's not he a saw sign, you in your come on. Like, yeah. And I told you I started to grow a little yeah, bit. You know what I mean? And stuff, yeah. But to be honest, they only had one scholarship left. You know, oh, so, my God. And so, you got cut from your high school team twice. So it was like, twice. it's a big thing to go and try again. Man, you, you know how nervous I was? Yeah. It's a massive thing. So I, I got cut already. I'm not that good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. to play. And yeah, I was yeah. playing a lot in the park. Yeah. And I was playing because I started to grow. And people were asking, do you play basketball? Yeah. So I started playing a lot at the park and backyard. I was playing. Yeah, I get that question. And, and Do you have the love, by the way? Like love for basketball? Yeah, I started okay. loving it. Okay. I started yeah. loving it yeah. like my junior year when I got cut. Yeah. Then I, I picked it up my senior year. And then that, you know, that time in between, I was playing a lot, mm-hmm. you know. And the coach said tryouts, and it was 32 guys tried out. And I put on a show. Like, mm-hmm. I, Damn. But it, look, let me tell you something. I played outside myself, though. Yeah. I, I still think about some of the stuff that happened. Mm. That's happened to me three times in my like life. You're on yeah. your game. Everything. I've had, three, yeah. I've had three outer space experiences yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. on the basketball court. Yeah, yeah. I can name the three. What was going through your mind before those trials? Because I was nervous. I was shaking. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah. because what happened was I was in class with a couple of other players, and the, the teacher asked everyone to stand up and introduce themselves. Oh, no. And say, what's your, what, do you, what do you want to major in? Now, I, I love playing, so I was thinking aviation. Yeah. I said, I want to major in aviation, but I still want to play basketball. And I heard the two guys in the back laughing. Because yeah. yes. they knew me, but I never played. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't walk onto a Division One team. Yeah, yeah, division yeah. One is the top level. Yeah. Yeah. You might walk onto an NAIA school, yeah. and then there's Division Two, yeah. and then there's, you know, Division One. Yeah. that just one. doesn't happen. Yeah. No yeah. one does it. Uh, but I was very athletic. Like, I could jump. I could jump yeah. over the backboard, and I could shoot. And that, those two things were very good for yeah. me. Yeah. Can you still do it? What? Jump shoot, I can shoot. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look smarter. <laughs> now, I get to the tryout, and we're on the, instead of the third floor, we're on the fourth floor, that track, but they had another court there. And the court was a little bit ex- longer than a regular court. And the coach came in, and he used to chew a cigar. Like he, never, he never smoked it. He'd always chew it. Evidence. He'd always spit the tobacco out. His name is Bob Reinhardt. And he was a scout for the Atlanta Hawks. And then they brought him in to be the head coach. Okay, okay yeah. So he had a lot of connections. And I, and I yeah. say that because I, my story will, will tell you how yeah. I got to the next level. Yeah. And he said, all right, fellas, it's 32 of you guys. He goes, put them in teams. The assistant coaches put us in teams. And let us play. And every, all the coaches were standing up. 
and all the guys that were already on the team were up there watching. Okay, they were already on the team, yeah. so there's 32 new guys yeah. trying to get that one spot. Yeah, that's tough. And 32 for one spot. Off, and yeah. you know, let me tell you something. Everything I shot went in. Every time I touched the ball, I dunked on somebody. Boom! I dunked so many times. The coach sat down against the wall. He said. I want to watch the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Remember yeah, him yeah, saying yeah. that. Okay. So it was just one of those days where everything went right. And it that's happened going. three times in my career. But it just, I'm talking about, I can't remember how I played so well. Yeah. And. and, and you were nervous too. Normally but, like but, you come but, but I like, just started playing basketball and yeah. it just started. I was just so much better than everybody there. I, yeah. feel, I feel like not you, ma- you not making the high school team twice gave zero expectation for you on that day. Which Probably. Happened. Probably. Yeah, but a lot yeah. of people, it forms their identity. They're like, oh, I failed twice. Now I'm just going to, yeah, you know I don't what I mean? Care. I, don't I, care. I don't care, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, but, I, you know, I never thought about it, though. I just yeah. went up there thinking, you know, if, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm still going to be in school, though. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I was thinking aviation, yeah. but I wanted to play basketball. So yeah. I said, why not try out, try out? I get there, and then after the tryout, he came up to me. He said, listen, if you continue to play like that, you're going to be a superstar one day. Damn. And I said, wow. He goes, be at practice tomorrow. Yeah. So I didn't know, I, but see, I, I never played on a team, yeah. so I didn't know the logistics of <laughs> now what happens, yeah, who pays out. for what. I don't know nothing. I know nothing, yeah. zero. So I said to one of the guys, you know, how do I, who pays for my plane ticket? You know, I was just asking questions. How do I do this? I've never flown on a plane either. Yeah. Never been on a plane at yeah. the time ever. And you wanted yeah. to be aviation. And I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, <laughs> yes. Never been on a plane. I just picked aviation. Damn. Now listen, I get and then and, and the coach called me in and he said, listen, we're going to give you that scholarship. That pays for your, your room and board, your books, it's your job in the summer. That's you amazing. Money in the summer. That is and amazing. and I, I said, you know, how long? He goes, that's a four-year scholarship because you're the luckiest guy in the world. Woo. So I went home and I told my mom and my mom was like, what? <laughs> so my mom called my sister. My sister was like, what? what? What are you talking about? You, yeah. you, that didn't happen. I said, yes. And then I started playing. First year, I didn't play a lot. Second year, I played a little bit more. Third year, mm. I played. I became a su- sort of a star. My fourth year, I was a man. You know mm. what I mean? So, And yeah. that was the time, like in the 80s, where they actually stayed in college three, four years. Everyone yeah. stayed in college four years. There yeah. was no leaving. So I played my four years. But my coach was a scout for the Atlanta Hawks. Mm. So my third and fourth year, my junior and senior year, scouts would come watch the scouts Were from the Lakers. Shooting, huh? shooting guard in college? Yeah, I was okay. a shooting guard. Scouts would come from the Lakers, from from – from the Spurs, we had scouts coming from everywhere, just watching some of the players. Like mm-hmm. we had some talent on our team, though. Yeah, yeah. And you're talent, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. we scouts always come from talent. both teams. Because yeah. you're Division One, yeah. so there's always gonna be yeah. scouts in the stands yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, always. So, if, so after you got the scholarship, was that like sort of the first time you're like, yep, yeah, now I'm gonna go to the NBA? Like that's no, my, no. So the, when the when the NBA when was <laughs> not even on my mind, man. Let me tell you, really? because I because I wasn't, I wasn't focused. I, it wasn't about getting to the top. It was it was step by step for me, yeah. Because it happened so fast and it happened so. So you were just quick. going with the process. I was just going with the with the flow. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with the flow. That's and then what's the next thing gonna happen? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So once I got to that third and fourth year, I started thinking about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, but I'm thinking maybe I go overseas. But what happened was my senior year, I won player conference of the year. So I was player conference. The, the, the whole conference, I was the best player in the conference. Yeah. But one of the coaches. From another team, Arkansas Little Rock, he got a job in Kuwait. Yeah. Ooh. Now, he offered me a contract to go to Kuwait. Why didn't you go? Yeah, let me tell you why I didn't go. <laughs> 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 right. Now, he, he – money. Kuwait is where – the they, they were having no. It was they, they were fighting. It was like war over there. Oh. It was war. Yeah, yeah. And I and I I turned him down. I turned him down. I said, "Listen, now." I said, "I don't think I'm going to do it." So man. you knew what was going on over there. But I did. Yeah. But I just like just talking to people. Yeah. They were like, "Man, be careful." You know, any like, TV news? There's nothing yeah. Yeah. yeah, be no. careful. Don't don't you know? Don't rush in anything. Why don't you have a look at other teams? Other. I said, "Okay." And then I told the coach. I said, "Look, coach, I, I thank you for it, but I'm, I'm probably just going to want to stay on you know in the United States and see what happens." Who was like? Who did you kind of verse in college? Like, was there anyone you? Kind of, I kind of, I think Scotty Pippen was those years and stuff. Yeah, and no, no like, nobody in the D one. Who I don't know who was D one. No, in nobody in our conference. We're in the okay. transatlantic, uh, oh. the TAC. So I mean, maybe one or two other guys. There was only one other guy that went NBA out of our whole conference, oh. and I was the only guy from our whole school to ever go NBA. So wow. 
And then, okay. yeah, so... Are you saying that your college or high my school? College, my college, Okay, your college, yeah. damn. Yeah, so and it was a D1 school? Yeah. Oh, and damn. But then after I left, yeah. another guy got drafted or whatever, yeah. Okay. But like, if you... Like, Zarina's put up photos. She went to visit my school, yeah. and they got a picture of me and... and That's and crazy. Yeah. Over yeah. there still, nice. Yeah. 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 But, but, dude, I wasn't thinking about the NBA until that senior year when those scouts started to come. Hmm. And the guy came up to me and he said, look, I like the fact that you're wiry... You know, you look like you can play multiple positions. You shoot the ball well. You know the game. You know, and I, I'm hearing all this, and I start thinking, wow, yeah. this could happen, this could happen. Potential, yeah. It could happen. And then the Lakers invite me to rookie camp. Yeah. Damn. Gotcha. So, I go, but listen. This that, must is, have, that must have been surreal. This is a crazy story. Yeah. Now, <laughs> when you go to rookie camp, you're there for 30 days, okay? You're there for 30 days. So I packed everything, <laughs> all my shoes, all my socks, a suit. I took the kitchen sink, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> you everything. understand what I'm saying? I'm I packed it. everything. And this is the first time the Lakers invited two teams. Rather than one, like every NBA team has a rookie team. Yeah. They'll bring in 14 guys, mm. okay? Mm. So you see, and they might pick one guy to go to veterans camp, mm. and hopefully he'll make the team. Okay, they'll cut the whole rookie team, okay? The Lakers invited two teams, so they had 28 guys. And, and, my, and they, get, they were handing out jerseys. My jersey was 106. Yeah. Like, what, what is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. 106. Yeah. But I didn't, it didn't bother me because there was one other guy from Atlanta who was on the first team, okay. and they played, a practice, they played a practice game. And uh, they played in the first game of the, uh, the summer league. The summer league was at Loyola Marymount. And it was packed. That was the year Dave Robinson came out of the um, out of the, the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. So everybody in LA wanted to see Dave Robinson. He was the Michael Jordan back then. He was the yeah. the new guy coming in. Mm -hmm. He was the, the best yeah. best thing. Best so everybody wanted to see him. So the first the first team played and lost. And the guy from Atlanta came up to me. He goes, "If you guys lose, they're gonna cut you tonight. Straight away, they're gonna cut you." Yeah. I'm nervous. I'm already nervous. I'm shaking. The gym is packed. I'm talking about packed, man. Yeah. Well, you and played we, college in front of people, so you're kind yeah, of but, but, but Yeah, but now I'm playing as a pro, and we're playing against yeah. Dave Robinson. My yeah. first game was against Dave Robinson. Yeah, there's yeah. more pressure. And everyone's yeah. here to watch and him. And everybody's here, here to watch him, right? Yeah, yeah, that's big. Let me tell you, again, another one of those times when I played outside myself because I wasn't that good. I was good. But okay? not that good. As but not that yeah. good. I, like in college, I was good, but I wasn't that good. I'm being honest with myself. Mm. I wasn't that good. Yeah. Sometimes you need a little luck to get you to the next level. Yeah, hundred percent. So somebody was with me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not being here blowing smoke up myself. I know <laughs> I wasn't that good in yeah. college. I only played a year. Before. You know how, how do you yeah. play better than 32 guys yeah. and make a, team, a Division One team? Mm. So this time, I'm playing with the Lakers and we're playing David Robinson. I had 35 points. In an NBA <laughs> summer league, I could not miss, man. I, everything I put up went in, boom, boom. And somebody shot a jumper and missed, and Dave went up to get the rebound, and I caught it, and I dunked it. Ooh. And the people Dang. went did I talk, did I big berserk. The they went berserk, man. They went berserk. I'm about to go They berserk. went berserk. <laughs> <laughs> they went berserk, right? Yeah, yeah. So I felt great. <laughs> <laughs> but we lost. So I'm thinking they got to cut us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't cut us because we played really well. You know what I mean? Yeah, so... Yeah. Was David Robinson like amazing? Like amazing, back then, man. Yeah. He might have had forty-two or forty-five. So he killed that game yeah. as well. Oh, he was he was better than anybody else. Yeah. He was better than anybody else. Now my jumpers were just was, just was yeah. going. Yeah. I was going for the other team. Yeah, yeah. I was the best on our team though. Mm. But he was the best in, in the game. Yeah, how far he was he was Dave Robinson. But you posterized him before anyone. Yeah, else. I got him. But yeah, Come that on, happens. Yeah. That happens in the NBA on everybody. Though. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but then the second game was the next day, and we played against the Philadelphia 76ers. There was something about that gym mm. that just made me feel good. You know, you're already full of confidence. Mm. I, I come out with 35 points and have a dunk, and everybody's now looking at me like, I got a New Jersey, my number 21. So everybody's giving me, like I'm walking around like I'm the man now, you yeah. know what I mean? But my confidence is sky high. Damn. And I had 32 points in this game. So I played so well against Philadelphia, the owner and the coach, Jimmy Lynham was the head coach, Harold Katz was the owner. Mm. They came down after the game. I was in the locker room taking a shower. Knocked on the door. Uh. Copeland in there. One of the guys opened the door. 
And I was in the shower, and I, and I, I said, I'll be out. I came out. Jimmy Lynham said, I like the way you play. We had a kid named David Wingate who played at Georgetown. We just cut him. We need a guy about your size, about 6'6", who can shoot the ball and defend. I said, well, I'm, I'm with the Lakers. He goes, yep, well, we want to offer you a partial contract to come to veterans camp. Mm. So I didn't know what to do. Thinking, okay, okay, mm. well, I, can I get back to you? Yep. Well, here's my card. Mm. Give me a card tomorrow. So I went straight to the Lakers coach. I said, look, these guys want to offer me a partial contract. He sent me to Mitch Kupchak who was the general manager back then for the Lakers. Mm. Mitch goes, nah, they can't have you. We're going <laughs> to offer you a contract yeah. to come back. Now, back then, the minimum was $110,000, yeah. like for a rookie, 110000 Mitch goes, we'll give you fifty we will give you half of that to come to rookie camp, to, to come to vet camp, um, to come to vet camp. Mm. So I can't negotiate. I don't know how to yeah. negotiate. I'm, again, yeah. I have no idea about the business. <laughs> yeah. I'm and just a basketball player, right? That's still a lot of money to you as well. That's, you know a, I mean? yeah. that's massive yeah. money. Yeah. You coming out of college, you have no money in college. Yeah, they don't give you any money, man, in yeah. college. Yeah. And that's in the, that's early, Back that's then. 89, 90. That's, that's a, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. All right, so I called my college coach. I said, coach. I said, Coach Reinhardt, I said, um, the, the, you know, Philadelphia want to offer me a contract. He goes, what are you talking about, Copeland? I could hear him chewing on the cigar. <laughs> and then I said, I said, and then the Lakers want to offer me a contract. He goes, you've only been there for two days. What are you talking about? He goes, I'll call you back. And he called the scout for the Lakers. And he called the scout for Philadelphia. And he rang me back in my hotel room. He goes, we got to get you an agent straight away mm. because um, – Played yourself into a contract somewhere. Damn. I said, "Wow!" Now remember, I packed for thirty days. <laughs> so the, 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 the summer league lasts for thirty days. I'd been there two days. So that morning, the agent came. To, uh, he came to my hotel room. His name was Titus DeCourcy. I remember, him. little short guy. He goes, "I'm your agent. I'm going to be your agent. I'll help you out with this contract." <laughs> yeah. So he goes in and negotiates with Philly and LA. LA goes, "We'll offer him seventy-five grand." Philly goes, we'll give them the whole guaranteed contract. Nice. Come to yeah. Veterans Camp. Nice. So they signed me that day for 110000 Yeah. And, he, and the owner came to my, my hotel that day, and he goes, he looked, reached in his pocket, and he gave me $700. He goes, go buy you a steak dinner, and we'll see you at Vet Camp in a month. 700 in 1990? Yeah. Just to buy me, just go buy you a steak <laughs> dinner. What kind of steak <laughs> dinner is <laughs> 700 bucks? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's how much meat is it? <laughs> but I mean, you, like then, that, you're dealing with NBA money, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the best steak you've ever had? Hey, man. Hey, man. But let me tell you the funniest story. Let me tell you the funniest story. Yeah, yeah. The funniest story is, I was there for two days, yeah. so my bag wasn't, I had taken nothing out of my bag. I just closed my bag up. But when I got on the plane, when I landed in Atlanta, because I got that late flight in L.A., yeah. When you land in Atlanta, it's the next morning. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Guess who's on the, guess who's in the newspaper, the same newspaper plan I worked for, a picture of me on the front page. No. Nah. Huh? That's amazing. So when I, when I see the, my brother goes, dude, you're in the paper. I said, what? Yeah. So I open the sport, like you open the, <laughs> and they got a picture of me on the front page. It's the fan. With an LA with a 76er um, top on. They did a big story on and me. I this guy goes from zero to 100. Da, 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 da. And I get back and people are going nuts. And everybody thinks I'm, I'm a millionaire now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a car. I want a yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. Like, get y'all ass out of here. <laughs> was, so. was your six other friends working there? Because you said they were seven. Yeah, years. they're still there. They're still there. Like, so they they're probably there for a long it. time. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. They're still there. But I remember there was a girl that I liked. I was just hoping she saw that photo, you know. <laughs> she would just would not give me the time of day. Yeah, yeah. But that all worked out, man. And I, you know, I ended up playing uh, one year at Philadelphia and one year with the Clippers. So, yeah. So, what'd you do with your suitcase that you packed for thirty days? Man, I slung that thing in the corner, man. <laughs> kept moving, man. Kept Even moving. veterans camp, veterans camp was good. The same Vet veterans camp was good because I, when I went to veterans camp, me and Kenny Payne, the guy I was telling you about, uh, we were, and there was one more guy. They drafted a guy named Tony Mack out of the University of Georgia. And Tony Mack was a beast. He was 6'6", he had a big chest, and he had long arms, and he could get to the basket any kind. He was, he was Barkley, but he was a little bit more finesse. Yeah. And he wasn't as wide, but he was very good. Could shoot yeah. it, but he was lazy. Like, uh, but they drafted, him, they drafted him in the first round. Like, I was just a pickup. And they drafted Ken, uh, Kenny Payne in the first round. So yeah, when you yeah. draft a guy in the first round, you, you don't cut them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys are in there. You got to invest in them. Yeah. 
And they'd already signed me. And and Tony Mack hurt himself because we stayed at a hotel uh, early during vets camp, and they'd always send a car to pick us up. And Tony Mack would always be late. Like, I'd be down in the car waiting. Tony Mack would always be late, you know. And then Tony Mack, um, I'm not going to train today, man. My, my leg's sore, my head sore or something. Yeah. He always had excuses. Mm -hmm. So right at the end of camp, they cut him. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, they let him go. He could have been T Mac. Yeah. And they let us, they, they brought me and Kenny in. And me and Kenny played, you know, we played. Uh, and when you were in the team, because uh, that year your 76 team came second in the East. Yes. And there's a big East, like Birds, Celtics, Detroit Pistons, Bulls, you know, and obviously. That's the same year Jordan won his first championship. They knocked us out. Yeah. And Atlanta, we, won, we won the Atlantic Division and they won the, the East okay. and they knocked us out. Yeah, first it was year. a big east. Like, oh, yeah. were you guys talking about winning the championship? Like, of Bernard's course, we, of course, because we were, yeah. we were good because we added Rick Mahorn. Now we had um, Scotty Brooks, who's a coach, who was a, who was a coach of the Washington yeah. Wizards. Yeah. OKC okay, now. Yeah. He was at oh, he was at OKC. He's yeah. not there anymore. But he was coming off the bench, and we had Hershey Hawkins, who I thought was one of the best shooters I've ever met in my life. Uh, we had Rick Mahorn, and we had Charles Barkley, and we had. Ron Anderson. So we had some talent on that team. Yeah. To compete. You, to thought, compete. Yeah, you had yeah. a chance. You had a chance. Uh, and, and so uh, the funny story, though, when I first got to Philadelphia, Mo Cheeks. You guys heard of Mo Cheeks? Oh, play? yeah, yeah, you yeah. heard of Mo yeah, Cheeks yeah. that played with Philadelphia? Yep. He was a big-time superstar mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. he, play, he played with Dr. J and Damn. Moses yeah. Malone and all those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the face of the Philadelphia 76ers. He, from Philly, he'd been there for 15, 14 mm -hmm. years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they mm -hmm. traded him because he – we had workouts every morning. Like, the rookie guys would get up and go yeah. work out every morning. And he would be there with us. He was working out. And, he, and I became good friends with him. Yeah. And he was helping me out, getting over screens, yeah. you know, reversing the ball, you know, that kind of stuff. So, me, Scotty, uh, Kenny Payne, Tony Mack, and then Mo Cheeks. And one day, they traded Mo without telling – usually, they bring you in and say, we're going to trade you. One of those situations. They traded him because they had it on the news – they see him. You see this Mercedes driving up in his in his car, and there was a bunch of cameras there. And he, he rolled the window down. He goes, "What's happening?" And they go, "How does it feel to be traded?" And man, he Whoa. took off, and he and then they caught up with him. And he was crying. And he lost it because he just felt a part of the Philadelphia. That years. happens a lot in the NBA. It happens it's now. So sad. It's a business now, yeah. and that's why when you see guys saying, "I want the money." Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. not selfish because they're gonna get rid of you yeah. when you can't do what they want you to do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you better get every penny you can. Yeah, mm. because there's a lot of money to go around. Okay, yeah. when they, if somebody's making forty million dollars a year, that owner's making four hundred million dollars a year. Yeah, you understand yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So don't think 100%. that the owner's paying all of his money. But it was uncommon back then, wasn't it? Though. Yeah. So for him to get traded after oh, being yeah, there, because they would have brought him in because he was he was a part of the the team though. Yeah. yeah. You know, if he's just another guy. Then you, you trade him or whatever, but yeah. because he was a part of the furniture, yeah. you don't you don't do a guy like and that. And the face you know of the team yeah, as well. Yeah, so. Yeah. so that was the first time you versed NBA players, the veteran camp. That was the first time. Because obviously you just got into basketball and you were playing and you like your competition wasn't the highest. Like there was still college. What about like the NBA difference? Like Charles Barkley and that team versus you. The difference like, was speed, strength. Everybody could shoot, like five man could shoot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in college, your five man would rebound and block shots. Mm -hmm. In the NBA, everybody worked on their game because they had time to work on their game. Like you play. That's all they did. That's all they did. That, that's, that was their career. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. everybody was good. Every, there was not a bum on our team anywhere uh, in the NBA. And I hear training, like there's plays that just, they just don't miss in training. My, they shoot all day. Hershey Hawkins was the best shooter I've ever been around. One of the best shooters I've ever been around. He was automatic, and I had to guard him. Now, he oh. killed me every day in practice, but it made me a better player, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. learned how to come off screens and get open. Yeah. Like, I, I'm right behind him. I got this guy, and he's over there now. Yeah. shooting a jump shot. And I, and yeah. He how taught me he? how to become a better and player. And there wasn't a big wow. three-point game back then, was there? No, 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 not, okay. not a lot. Because I want to ask you, because, like, obviously there's something called imposter syndrome that exists, yeah? And you can imagine you've gone through all of these things where you feel like luck has pushed you across the line most right. of the time. Like, what sort of, like, what was the, the mentality going in? Were you still feeling the, the pressure? Because now you've made the NBA, you're around the big boys and stuff. Did it help or hinder you? No, let me tell you, it, it hindered, being around the big boys hindered me. Anyways, yeah, keep going. It hindered me <laughs> because I didn't know how to be a professional. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because it was new. Everything was brand new. Like, 
a, a tri- uh, our first trip, a road trip, they give you an itinerary, right? Yeah. So I just thought it was another piece of paper, so I put it down. <laughs> we fly from Philadelphia to Utah. Mm. There's six feet of snow. I don't have a coat. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a coat. I yeah. have no coat. So Charles Barkley, we jump in a taxi. Charles Barkley takes me to the mall, and there was this cowboy store. Now he bought me a long trench leather coat, 800 yeah. bucks. I remember him giving me 800 bucks to buy this coat. Damn. Swear to God. And I kept that coat, too, and I still got it in Atlanta. It's all molded, but I kept it because Memories. it was a part of my story. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I mean? You shouldn't yeah. have bought the steak dinner. <laughs> 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 He's right. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it, it hurt me more because, again, as a rookie, the veterans look after you. Mm. Every team, veteran guys look after rookies. Like, they make you go, go get me breakfast, Rook. Give you a hundred dollars and you keep the change. It's, it's just yeah. it's just a part of the NBA. Mm-hmm. Or I need I need twelve uh, bottles of wine. Go get them. Here's two hundred bucks, and the bottles of wine might cost a hundred bucks, and the change is yours. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So that's how it is. They use you, but they show you the ropes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then when you become a veteran, you have to do it to the other. Keep the young guys. It keeps man. going, right? It yeah. keeps going. Yeah. But then the problem was, I'm hanging with Rick Mahorn and Charles Barkley, who are mega stars in the NBA. Yeah. Massive. Right? So I didn't, and, and they already established, they're already making big money. And I'm making, I'm, I'm on peanut money. So, but I didn't realize I should be in the gym working out more. Yeah. You know what I mean? I should be working on my jump shot more rather than these guys coming by, pick, hey, we're going to pick you up in, at six o'clock, be ready. Mm-hmm. So I jump in the back. I'm just so happy to be yeah. with two superstars. It yeah. went so quick. You didn't like, it went so quick, back. man. You didn't so, miss out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking, dude. I, and, a, and a young kid would not have the nerve to tell the two veteran superstars, nah, man, I can't do it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it catches up with you because the next year they bring in two more rookies. And the next year they bring in two more rookies. Yeah. And these rookies might be better than you. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. just how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. And if, if I was the 12th man on the bench, the, t- the 11th and 12th man on the end of the bench, mm-hmm. they get moved aside because they bring in these other guys that they have to yeah, pay. Yeah. And every year the money goes up. Right. So now I'm paying this rookie 250 grand, and you're only on 120. You got to go, buddy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how that's yeah. how the NBA works. Wow. You know what I mean? So, and you, you felt like you didn't, you could have went a like. I think I, I, I thought, I sh- and I learned that. I, it took some time, but and I think you learned that. Yeah. But I would have learned a lot uh, a lot quicker had I played elementary and high school ball. Yeah. You know, I, I just didn't have a clue. Yeah. I didn't have a clue, man. What I was, I could have been a football player. I, I, you know, yeah. I just didn't have a clue. And it happened for me. It happened for me. So he's just so quick. It's like a flash. Yeah, yeah. man. It, it, went, it went so quick. People go, "Why didn't you stay in the NBA?" For I said, "Dude, I, <laughs> yeah, we it was not as easy as it looks." When did I play in the NBA? It yeah. went so fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the Clippers um, thing. I came back to Atlanta after the, the, the Sixers didn't cut me. They renounced my contract, which meant they could use my contract. They use Scotty Brooks's contract and one more guy. And they brought in Manute Bowl. I don't know if you guys remember yeah. Manute oh, Bowl. Because yeah. they had to pay him a lot of money. Yeah. So they, they used our contract to bring him in. So that means I was a free agent. Hmm. So, again, my agent found me a tryout. I went back home to Atlanta. I tried out with the Atlanta Hawks. Doc Rivers, they had uh, Dominique Wilkins, Kevin Willis, yeah. John Battle, all these superstars mm-hmm. on the team yeah. that I had been training with in the summertime when I played college ball, but now I'm trying to take their job. Yeah. And they're not having it. Uh, you know what I mean? No, bro, you're not going to come here and take our job. We like you, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but keep it moving. You know yeah. what I mean? So the coach ended up saying, nah, we, we probably can't use you. Okay, but I got one more tryout. And that my tryout was in L.A., the Clippers. Mm-hmm. And it's just something about L.A. that, that made me feel good. Yeah. And I got to L.A., and – Ron Harper was just coming back from his knee injury. Okay. Now, Ron Harper was the first Michael Jordan. Everyone don't, you guys don't realize that. No. Ron Harper was the best player. Michael Jordan's the GOAT, the best player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Ever. And now, you young guys won't say that. You say LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. We're going to get no, into no, that. No, 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 was better than Michael Jordan in the early days. That's a statement. In the 80s. I want you to repeat in that. In the 80s. In the 80s. Okay. He had the big hands. Yeah. He had the crossovers. And he would dunk on anybody. And yeah. he had the sweet jump shot. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's athletic, yes. everything. All yeah, around. he had that complete. Yeah, it yeah. took Michael some time to get that complete package because yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael was on the Chicago team and there was nobody around him. Yeah. Yeah. So Michael learned, yeah. you know, I got to be the man. Yeah, and yeah. over time, he became a, mm. the best ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Because there was not a lot of people around him. Directly. Ron came into the NBA and was already at that level, mm. okay? Yeah, yeah. So Ron, when I went to L.A., Ron was just coming back from knee yeah. surgery. Mm. So... Uh, they they brought me in for a tryout, and again I'm in LA, and my jumper's going well. And they remembered me from you know the summer league LA. Yeah. My jumper's going well, you know, and but Ron was a step slower, and I was going past him. Yeah. <laughs> and Ken Norman, who was another player on that team, he said to me, he said, "Listen, if you pass one time, you might make this team." Which meant every time I touched the ball, I shot it. I wasn't passing nothing. I was gonna make sure. Because I worked on my shooting yeah. from so much, yeah. Hershey Hawkins, and I felt comfortable shooting now. Mm. Now I had confidence in my jump shot, mm. and it was going. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was going. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I felt, not, not arrogant, but I felt like I was good. Yeah. Mm. And but, I, but then I had Ron Harper on me, but he wasn't quick enough because of his knee. Yeah, he's you not the same old person. He wasn't the same person. Yeah. So Ron liked me. Ken liked me. They signed me to a contract. But it was a partial contract because... Bo Kimball was out with an injury. Mm. And when Bo came back, Bo was on $2 million. I was on $200,000. Yeah. So they had to let me go. When they let me go, and, and I'll tell you, this is a funny story too, when they let me go. We were playing in a game, and I was getting some time. I was actually playing. You were getting minutes. Yeah, I was getting minutes. That's good, yeah. In the last game of my NBA career, it's 12, 14 seconds on the game, on the clock. And I think Ken Norman grabs the ball and kicks it up to me. And you guys need to Google Grandmama Larry Johnson. No. Uh, you probably won't remember. You know Wait, Grandma? Yeah. Okay, Charlotte Hornets, right. Yeah. Grandmama was a rookie yeah. my last year. And he was the best. He had his own commercial with the wig, mm. you know, the, grand, the purse. Yeah. <laughs> number one draft, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. number one. Yeah. Right. Grandma. And Grandmama w was standing in the lane waiting on me as if to say, you can't jump. Mm. I gave him everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boom. Posterized? And he felt posterized. I yeah. can't find somebody just sent me a message a few minutes ago saying we can't find the tape because I've been looking for it for years and years and years. Now they just hooked me up with the Clippers uh front office or something, so I'm gonna try to get them to send it to me. Yeah. This is the biggest dump the of my career. Oh, yeah. Don't we have that website you can watch any game? Nah, but, uh, you from, the, no, no, like, no, from no, 1980s, like 90s. Archives, we'll uh, probably archives, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll try and we'll try Young James. See if you can try to find out I've asked twenty five people. Young James can, can find it for us. Okay. Yeah. If we can if we can dig it up. Yeah. How Please. much are you willing that, to pay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay anything. Me, that was my best <laughs> dunk. Yeah. That was the best dunk of my career. And yeah. I've dunked on a lot of people. Yeah. Damn, this one was the best. because In an NBA game, that's... Let me tell you yeah. something. Yeah. Because after every NBA game, they give you a, a gift. Like a, a big gift, a, a $500 voucher to go eat somewhere. Or, or a leather jacket or leather boots or a gold chain. Damn. They gave... And I only played 20 minutes that game. I got the, the prize. That, that's the only time I got the prize. And it was a yeah. gold chain. I kept that gold chain for 25 years, and I ended up selling it, like, here in Australia. You regret selling it? Yeah, because I yeah. thought this part of it. it's part of sentimental yeah, value. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But they gave me that gold chain for dunking on Larry Johnson. And Larry Johnson uh -huh. wanted to fight. We were walking through the tunnel, to fight, yeah. and Ken Norman was like, my boy just dunked on your <laughs> ass. <laughs> and he wanted to fight. Yeah, and so yeah. everybody was pushing and shoving or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they were all, But I came down, and I, and I sort of tweaked my knee on the dunk, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? So the next morning I come, we had, we had shoot around the next morning because we had another game. Yeah. I walk into the shoot around and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they cheer me. And I said, coach, I can't go today. You know, I talked to the trainer. Oh, wow. He goes, yep, all right, sit on the side. So right after training, the, Lake, the Clippers were the only team back in the day who would have eight or ten guys on injured reserve, which means you can have a bunch of guys, you're still paying them, but they when they come off, you know, but they, they wanted to stop that. Like you meant to have two or three, yeah. but the Clippers had seven, eight guys, right? Yeah. So the, the coach said to me, "This is the exact words: You'll be safe. We're gonna put you on injury reserve." That's what that's what the coach said to me. So I get on the, I go back to the office and get on the phone and call my agent. I said, "Look, I think I'm gonna be okay. They're gonna put me on injury reserve." He said, "Great." When I hang up the phone, click. I open the door. The other coach goes, "They won't let us do it. We gotta cut you." Whoa. So I went from this yeah. to, the, to that. Yeah, yeah. And you were hyped after the... I was hyped. Yeah. But it is what it is, man. Yeah, it it was and, and then my agent said, look, 
you probably need to go. Was it a damaged anything or just nah, sore? Okay, it was that's just good. Some that's sore. very good. That's very and he good. said, you probably need to just go play somewhere, man. You don't want to go sit on an NBA yeah. t- uh, bench and, and, and not play. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to go somewhere and play. He goes, I got a job for you in Greece, one in Spain, one in Australia. Mm. And I'm thinking, Australia? And I'm thinking to myself, and Australia, they were looking for they were looking for a bigger guy. They were looking for a four man, like a, a bigger guy. Oh, mm. They had Dave Colbert here playing with Dave Simmons. Mm. Dave Simmons is, is yeah, Ben Simmons', ben dad, Simmons yeah. is dad. Okay, yeah, yeah. so they had the t- they called him the two D's. Yeah. They cut Dave Colbert, and Dave Colbert played the f- sort of the four three. He was a big dude who could shoot the ball. Mm. So they're looking for a replacement. So I decided to come to Australia. So I'm going to come to Australia, man. You know, what well, three? No. What made you come to Australia? Because they spoke English. Yeah. Because it's an English speaking city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Dwayne McLean, who mm. played for for um for Sydney Kings. Yep. I knew him. Like Dwayne won a championship at Georgetown. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. From America. Uh, okay. And so I, I said, um he sort of said I mean I'm sorry, Villanova. He sort of said to me, he said, Listen, it's uh it's a, it's a good country, man. It's all right. It's, no, was no. there high hopes for the NBL? Because, like, obviously, like, nowadays, the NBL is, like, the thing. You know what I mean? It's getting much more... Early 90s then. was the best time, though. Okay, we, so yeah. Better than now? Prime uh, 100%. Time. We were on Channel 10 every day. Mm. Uh, like we, yeah, we, my we, dad says that was always on the it news. Was always on... Was, I had two or three commercials. Like, I'd, I'd come home and see myself on. I'm thinking, wow, they're really <laughs> pumping us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but we were, it was a part of... Cha- like, they treated us like the AFL. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? We, yeah. It was and, proper. Yeah. And my first year was the first time we moved... To Rod Laver Arena, so that was fifteen thousand. That's big. Now, when you got four teams in Victoria, we played the Magic, sellout. We played the Giants, sellout. Mm. We played Geelong, not much sellout, but it was still very packed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To have that many sellouts throughout the year it was a big thing. Was a massive thing, yeah, and yeah. they hated us, and we hated them. So it was a, yeah. bit of rivalry. So it was a massive, and yeah. that's how football goes. If you hate, you need rivalry. If you need rivalry, yeah. mm. right? So, you know, I, when I got to Australia, man, it was. It was one of those things. What they, year was this? Th- th- this was 1990, 91. 91. Okay. My first year was 92, though. Okay. Yeah. So I got late 91, 92. But they thought I was going to be bigger, mm. right? And when the coach saw me, he goes, hmm, you're not as big as we thought you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, I was going to get cut the first day. They were going to cut me the first day. From what I hear. Melbourne Tigers? Yeah, from what I'm hearing. Because yeah. I was terrible. We, we, had, we had training. And Dean Vickerman, who's the head coach of United now, yeah. he was on the rookie team. Like, we had a, two teams and a rookie team. He scored 32 points on me. Let me tell you why, though. Back then, there was no direct flights to Australia. So I flew from Atlanta mm. to Dallas. Dallas to L.A. L.A. To Sydney. To Hawaii. Oh. Hawaii to New Zealand. New Zealand to Brisbane. Brisbane to Sydney. Sydney to Melbourne. Uh, oh, my uh, goodness. Listen. Took me about forty hours. Okay, there was no direct flights, bro, in the early nineties. None. Australia so, was literally down under. No, nah, but it was like there was <laughs> extra, <laughs> like the Dallas and the uh, Brisbane and Sydney. It just it was. Bro, I'm learning Spanish. Too, yeah. I'm learning Spanish. I'm being honest. I'm not listen to me. Let me tell you something. <laughs> listen to me. So when I got here, I was jet lag drunk. I was I, I I didn't have a clue where I was. I seen the sun, the moon, <laughs> the star, I seen everything. So I, I had no idea. So I meet with the general manager. It's like 12 o'clock when I get in. They pick me up. It's like 12 o'clock. But I left Atlanta three days ago. You know, it was like that. And I'm, I'm my head's just, I can't even hold my head up. I'm just That's dragged. Right. Yeah. You know I'm dragged. Jet lagged too. Jet lagged. You know, I wasn't like I was in first class. I was in a you know, regular Probably, seat, right? Yeah. And he goes, well, sign the contract. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see you later. Like, so I had a quick bite. I went upstairs. And I hit the pillow, and I was knocked out. I'm talking about out. And now here, boom, 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 boom. And then I've been asleep for maybe three hours or two and a half hours or something, right? Mm. Boom, it's war giddy. Boom, 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 boom. Man, I'm here to pick you up. We got we got training. We got training. I said, what? Mm. Open the door. My eyes are bloodshot. You know, I can't walk. He goes, yeah, we got training. So I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm a professional. Mm. Grab my bag. Grab my shoes. I can't see, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. So the, my first day of training... I had no legs. I could and Lindsay ran an offense that was it would blow your mind if you if you were sane. Mm, yeah. I couldn't understand the offense. They thought I was a dummy, I thought, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I just played really bad, but they knew I could like 
couple of times I dunked the ball or whatever, and they were like, yeah, "Whoa, he's very athletic. He's very yeah. athletic. Yeah, yeah. He can shoot it." But Andrew was in Andrew was playing in in Europe at the time. Yeah. Mm. So, and our first game was at Broad Labor Arena. So my first game here in Australia, I had forty two points against against Canberra. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, first game. I, I, it was was it high scoring back then? Like was it eighty points, ninety points? What like? Games? No, because we played forty eight minutes. It was hundred points. Okay, then. But I, it was either forty two or thirty seven, and. Uh, one of the two. Right? It's been so long. That's a high scoring. Yeah. So, but I led. I led everyone in scoring, right? Yeah. And I remember. I remember Andrew calling his dad, saying, "How did the new guy go?" And Lindsey goes, uh, "He'll. He's not as big as we thought, but I think he'll be all right." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So and Andrew hear about you, like you were. Andrew didn't hear about me until he got back. Okay. And when he got back, the next training, like he got back right before the second game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and our famous play is the alley oop. Okay. Everyone yeah. wants to know how that happened. It just happened. He <laughs> like, he's coming down and I'm running the lane and he threw it up and I went and got it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he like that's the connection. Hey man, watch yeah. me. next time. Watch me. If you watch me, I'm gonna watch you. And I like to jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And every time he threw it up, I caught it. And at Apple Park back then, the old Apple Park, the rims were nine and a half feet, yeah. so you could jump and your whole body's over the rim. Over you know the what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's a bit shorter. Yeah. So. Um, and that's how it all happened, man. Yeah. How how what was your mind going through in your first year for the NBR? Because I'm thinking, there's one year you're playing with Charles Barkley, you're versing like Detroit Pistons, yeah. MJ, and all of a sudden now you're in Melbourne. You, you've got no idea how this competition. Well, I, just being honest with you, because yeah. you'd gone from the top, you felt like I felt like I dropped down a level, so I felt like no one could touch me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you come in as an import, you're supposed to score the ball and be the man. But luckily, we had Andrew as well. Like, no other team had a, a great Australian player. Like, everyone would bring in two imports, and those imports would score the points. Mm-hmm. And we had me and Dave Simmons, and Dave Simmons was sort of slowing down a little bit. Like, Dave, when he first got out of here, was scoring 30 points a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now he's averaging six, seven points a game. He's rebounding. You know what I mean? He's big. We want him for the size. Mm-hmm. But then I had to score, and I averaged, like, my first year, I averaged 29 points a game, and Andrew averaged wow. 31. So we were getting 60 yeah. But most imports were doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we needed Dave to pick his game up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we'd have that extra. That's you know straight what I mean? and, he didn't, well. and he didn't do it. That's why they end up cutting Dave, you know what I mean? So, but it was it was one of those, it was one of those. Um, was that, because I know like NBL, and NBA is like welcome to the league moments. Was there for NBA or even NBL, was it like a welcome to the league moment? Or not really? Well, because of like, the, I know the competition in NBA, you said it was much higher. Yeah. So it might have been like, more ferocious, more like... In the NBA, court, yeah. you, you knew... Here's the thing. In Australia, you play once a week. All right? mm-hmm. Maybe you might squeeze uh, the second game in. In the NBA, every night you play, you're going to play against some superstars. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to play Isaiah. You gotta, then tomorrow, we got to get on the plane. Tonight, we get on the plane. We fly to Chicago. We got to play Michael. And then you get on the plane, and the next day, you got to come back and play Dominique. Yeah. And then you got to fly to Boston, and you got to play Larry. <laughs> So you're not gonna. There's no. There's no messing around. Every night you're gonna get your butt kicked if you don't. If you're not on your game. And you're yeah. in a crazy era. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there were superstars on every 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 team, man. So you 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 didn't you know, you didn't have a night off. There was no night off. So yeah. from between the first year you got draft, not drafted, but obviously chosen by Philadelphia, yep. all the way until like your first game in the NBL. What was that? The span of what three years? Yeah. That's that must be like taxing. Let's be honest. I mean, that would have been. Yeah, like maybe it was, but but again, I, I keep telling you, I didn't know that. I didn't know the ins and outs of basketball because I I didn't I didn't know how it worked. The system. Yeah. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. It was still new to me. Mm. Mm. I, 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 there was nobody saying you're doing it the wrong way or you're doing it a different way. Yeah. Uh, you no, know, there was nobody. I, I didn't have a guide. I didn't have yeah. I didn't have a guide to say that's the wrong way to do it. I just thought maybe. It, it is what's it's happening. It happens to everybody. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. You're learning as you go. Basically. I'm learning as I go. Yeah. yeah. So it was good, though. It was good. Then for the NBL, because when you got there, like, you played for um, Melbourne Tigers and you won two titles. Mm. So over the years, like, how did you guys develop into, like, a championship team? And how is it even winning a championship? Because actually, we are oh, not so how, because <laughs> he's got a story about. Six grand finals, never won one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a killer mindset. Yeah? No, no, joke, joke. How killer do you have to be carrying 17 other guys? That's what I want to know. Hey, no, no, bro. No. If you didn't win a championship, you, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> Better he said it. No, so how is it like that championship mindset, even with gays and trying to like win, even like we want to talk about pressure because we know like you guys had the best comeback 
in NBA Finals. So how was it, even just winning your first title like that, build up throughout the season, keeping that consistency every week? Well, we, my first year here, that, a reason why I ended up staying was I got here in 92. Mm. The Tigers had never been to uh, the playoffs. Oh. Okay. And, they, and so me and Gaze had sort of created a pretty good backcourt. We were the biggest guards, like Andrew 6'8". Yeah, okay, yeah. And, and me, and most guards were six tiny, 6'3", six yeah. 6'2". Six so, we, we, so we made the championship that first year, and we lost – Oh, you made the third, finals. You made the finals and lost in 92, third game on the buzzer or something like that. Oh, yeah. God. So then um, I felt like we needed, you know, we, we, I can't leave. I can't like leave that. without yeah, you done. You're so close to winning. I can't, yeah. Then we picked up Mark Brecky. Like Mark Brecky came in in 93. So now we got a beast because Mark Brecky led the league in rebounding mm. and he could shoot it. And he was massive. Mark mm. Bucky's seven foot. Yeah, and just to your big, front right? court, basically. Yeah. So we knew if we got him on board with Dave, who was power, and Giddy, who did all the dirty work, and we had another guy, Robert Sibley, yeah, uh, from Brisbane, who could shoot it as well. Yeah, we put that package together in '93, and we ended up winning in. But, but, but then, so you won in your second year. We won my second year, oh. but we won in Perth. Tigers had never won a game in Perth since their existence. So, so for team. 10 years, the Tigers never won a game. Mm. Yeah. So that all the talk in our camp was, man, we haven't won in Perth ever. I shut it down straight away. Yeah. You can't talk like that. Let yeah. me tell you something. Tomorrow's a new day, bro. We're going we're gonna to win in Perth. And Ricky Grace was my enemy back then. Now, me and Ricky are good friends now. Yeah. I hated Ricky, and he hated me. Mm. Can we hate. Ask when I say yeah. hate, I mean hate. Who did he play for? He played for... For Perth, but he played for Oklahoma. Okay. Now, Ricky was a superstar in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said he had Stacey King, Horace Grant. Mm. He had some NBA guys with him in college. Mm. And in college, we played against him. Mm. And they beat oh. the crap out of us. Yeah. Mm. And he was giving it to me. Yeah. And I said, one day I'm going to see this guy again. Mm-hmm. And I saw him in Perth. Game right, over. right in his nose. Yeah. And Drew had grabbed me. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, dude, I, I owe him that. <laughs> said, they're gonna kick you out. They're gonna kick you out of the game. They're gonna kick you out of the game. Wait. I said, no, nah, he'll be all right. He needed that. Referees didn't see it, but I, I punched him right in his nose. And generally, when you get hit in the nose, you got tears coming out of your eyes. Yeah, yeah. He, he ran away and did like this. Came back, and we just never spoke. Most imports in the league, when you went to their city, they take you out afterwards. You'd have dinner. Yeah. yeah. Ricky never sm- said a word to me. I never said a word to him. We right. never shook. You don't see us shaking hands, nothing. Wait, yeah, so yeah. You just walked straight up to him, clocked him. Right, right in, in front game? of the scores, bitch. Correct, right, right, right in the game. Correct him right in his nose. Sure did. Yeah. This is my time. Drew grabbed me. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, yeah. man, I, I don't like him. Yeah. He goes, they're going to kick you out of the game. I said, well, Wait, you didn't get ejected for that? <laughs> no, nah, because the referees didn't see it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but, replay. But, so you yeah. burst him in the finals. What, but we burst him in the finals in 93. And remember I told you I was going to tell you a story about MVP? Yeah, championship. Yeah. Right. I won it in '97. I should have won it in '93, okay. but because we were so excited mm. about winning in Perth and winning a championship, yeah. our coaches didn't vote, so they gave it to Ricky. I had 35 Ooh. points. The in other the team, yeah. a losing team, they get yeah. MVP. I had 35 points in the and third. In, in, I had 35 points in the championship game. Yeah. I had a great series. It was mine. And Al Westover told me. He goes, man, you know, you should have won that. We just, we forgot to vote. Sorry, Lenard, that's karma, bro. Yeah, we got crazy. <laughs> we're cracking him in the nose, yeah, 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 yeah. But And Ricky, Ricky just did a podcast not long ago saying, yep, it was Lenard's, but too bad. He didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but now me and Ricky are best yeah. friends, man. When I go to Perth, I stay at his house. He comes down, we, we kick it, you know. We, we, it's mad, we and at least he's like, honest about it. Yeah. yeah. The punch so, was worth it, though. Yeah. So then you should want finals MVP. How about ninety seven? Because you won it in ninety seven. Ninety seven was we had we picked up Marcus Timmons. Marcus Timmons was a player who could do anything. Like Marcus was six seven, long arms, big hands, could shoot it, could rebound, mm-hmm. will dunk on you, could defend. He had the whole package. Mm-hmm. But Marcus didn't have the mentality. He he was like, uh, come work out, Marcus. Let's get up. Let's get up five hundred shots. Uh, Just very casual. Casual, yeah. but he was talented, yeah. okay, and he knew it. He didn't have to do it. That's a shock. He didn't have yeah. to do it because his talent was already there. Mm. But had he done it, he would have been in the NBA. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. That could. Yeah, I mean, by far. That's what by they far. always say, man. They, they yeah. always yeah. say that when it comes to like talent and working hard, talent. Yeah. Sorry, well, hard yeah. work beats talent when talent yeah. fails yeah. to yeah. work But also, hard. these guys, they're very. Like he might be playing, he's making, he's getting twenty points, ten rebounds. He's playing well already. Yeah. He doesn't want to push the extra to get right. back to the next yeah. level. Right. He's comfortable. Yeah, he's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. exactly he where he was. On so. Fifty points. Oh, yeah, that's know. right. He, he he was close to winning in ninety seven as well because he had a good series as well. But I just shot the ball really well. I think I ended up having thirty and twenty five. Talk and us through that comeback, and then like even pressure because you know we, we had a couple of comebacks. Which one? Which one are you talking the about? Ninety seven because I know you hit some game winners like you like you in the clutch moments. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Just, that's that's the one where. Magic were up 20, 18 or twenty points mm. or something. I think that one's on YouTube. Whoa. Yeah, that's yeah, on I've YouTube. seen that one. Yeah, and um, and they, they, they were up eighteen points and and like a, a year before that, we played in Brisbane mm. and we were down by a lot of points. And when you're down by a lot of points, me and Drew are just jacking. Yeah, but we're good nothing enough to lose. Yeah, we get, you're nothing to lose, but you're good enough. If you get hot, yeah, yeah, you just just those them. three pointers add up, bro. Yeah. Drew make two. I made three, and Drew makes another two. All of a sudden, we got a game. Yeah. And like we were down 25 in Brisbane, and we brought it all the way back. It went in overtime, and we won it. And people went nuts. Ooh. So we knew being down by that many, we were playing bad the whole game. And Magic, our fan, it was, it was, it was our fans. Yeah. And we were just, they were just spanking us, man. We were playing bad. And we were like, what is going on here? Yeah. And Drew hit a couple. And I hit a couple, and then Marcus Timmons hit a couple, and then I hit another couple. And, and then all of a sudden, the score starts to shrink, and Tony Ronaldson has two free throws. Or, or, or back then, it was one and one. Hmm. Okay, so, you, so if you miss that first one, whoever gets the rebound, oh, go with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. And they were down. They, the, the, the score, it was I – I, I remember hitting a three, falling out of bounds, and it went in. And I got the ball again, and I shot it, and it hit the – Side of the backboard. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell was that? So, <laughs> so then they went down, missed a shot, and somebody fouled Tony Ronaldson. They were up two points, and it was seven seconds to go. And Tony Ronaldson was three for – he had made three for three free throws. So, But he was you could tell he was nervous because oh, – You can tell. You can straight look. away. Okay. You can see him. He was nervous. He was, he was swallowing. Yeah. Like that, I go, yeah, this guy's nervous. <laughs> Drew, so so he missed the first one, and Drew he grabbed the rebound, and he kicked it to me. And Rob Rose, who was a superstar back then, was in front of me. So everybody's thinking, we're down two. I'm going to get. I'm gonna go to the basket and try to tie it and take it over time. Nah, bro. I crossed him through my legs <laughs> and pulled up, and it did nothing but net. Boop. And the, the people went berserk, dude. Because we're down by so many, yeah. and the fa fans were running around, yeah. cheerleaders were jumping on our backs, man. It was <laughs> crazy. How's that feel like? What's the feeling it like? It was amazing, because Lindsay, you never see any reaction out of Lindsay. Yeah. Lindsay's shirt was torn all open, and he was <laughs> rubbing his hair, man. He was nuts to see Lindsay like that. And they put, somebody picked me up and put, him on, put me on the shoulder, and then Lindsay came up and grabbed me, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was one of the best, t Channel 10, because Stephen Quartermain, who does Channel 10 now, mm. he was our, he was the sports guy back then. Mm. Mm. So all the games were called by Stephen Quarterman. Mm. So um, straight away it was on Channel 10. Then Channel 7 picked it up. Then Channel 9 picked it up. Yeah. SBS picked it up. So so whenever you watch TV that day and the next day and the next day, they talk about the great comeback. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we were seeing that. So I had a smile on my face for a week. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't know how many more games we won after that, but I was smiling about that game. Yeah, was, was that good. one of the best moments in the NBA yeah, career? Yeah, it was. That winning, winning, I think, the 35 points in the in the grand final, that first 93, yeah. was probably my best because I got hot and I just yeah. couldn't miss. Was that your third game? You said that was just like you played above your level? Yes. Okay. Yes. That was your third. That game. was the third when I when yeah. I just could not miss. And I, they gave me the ball and I went to work and I ended up with 35. Like I, I think I scored 20 in that quarter or something. I was snapped. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, and I was, I was just throwing up crap too, and it was going in. I was like, "How'd that go in? Give me another one. How'd that go in?" It was <laughs> one of those games where it was meant to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So unconscious. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. How's that feeling? Because we talk about like pressure, you know, like in the final seconds, and obviously we all we've never been in that situation, so we say we'll be calm under pressure and stuff. But there, when the game's on the line, how is it? Like, are you thinking? Are you saying I want to take? Nah, the moment, it, well, because or? I, I because you because you. Been in, yeah. in practice, you sort of work on stuff yeah. like that, yeah. pressure situations. So you or build whatever. your confidence up. You sort of build okay. your confidence up. There's no, there wasn't any real stress. You know what yeah. I mean? 
I've, I've missed some shots as well. I've missed a couple. I've made probably three or four game winners. You know what I mean? But it's funny because whenever we played in the playoffs, like Drew would always average 30 points a game, okay? And I'd always average 25 to 30, 29, 26, 25, 24, all right? But every playoffs I played in, I played in, I played in 15 seasons with the Tigers. We played in 14 playoffs, so we missed one time, okay? Every playoff series, my numbers have gone up. And the reason is they always try to stop Gazy. They might double-team Gazy yeah, or whatever. I guess yeah. So there was no pressure for me because I knew I yeah. had to score. If I don't score, we yeah. don't win. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. You know what I mean? playoff I was happy when for the playoffs. Playoff times, it comes yeah. up. So that's why Drew, when Drew grabbed that rebound, yeah. he didn't – he had time to dribble it down himself. Yeah. He kicked it to me he straight knew, away. Yeah. He knew I was going to get a shot off. Now, he, didn't, he probably didn't know if it was going to go in. But he knew. And he trusted prob- you as well. Yeah, that's right. That trust is everything. Matt, when that ball went in, you should have seen his reaction, his dad's reaction, and the people, the court announcer. It was That'd cheerleaders ran down, man. We And we parted all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I still think about that moment. What? Because okay. I know like yeah. me, like if championships or when I played a good game, I just think about it. And I can still remember the feelings. Uh, is that peak though? Like, does that peak in your life? Does yeah. It? Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's. You now the rest is just, you know. That's. In making the NBA is peak. Making the NBA, winning the grand final here is, is peak. Having your kids is always going to yeah. be peak. Yeah, that's yeah. a big thing. Yeah, those, yeah. those three yeah. things. Speaking sure yeah. yeah. speak about the NBA, I've got a quick question for you. Like, a lot of us, obviously, didn't get to witness the Michael Jordan era. Do you know what I mean? Oh, Larry okay. Baird and all that kind of yep. stuff. Yeah, and a lot of people have seen it through. You watched The Last Dance, yeah? Yes. Yeah, that was a big thing during the pandemic, mm-hmm. yeah? Yep. Um, and there's obviously that debate, the Michael Jordan debate, LeBron yeah. James debate, whether yeah. it's a debate or not. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of. I'm going to answer that right now, though. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll fix the debate for you so you can see it, though. I'm done. I'm done. A lot of people, like even players that played with like Michael Jordan at the time, they speak about like his killer mentality and all that yep. kind of stuff. And you got players in the NBA that still didn't think that Michael Jordan was the best. Like s- some people, like Allen Iverson, right. you know what I mean, didn't consider Michael Jordan the best. And he until does now, though. You know, he, he does now. now. He does now. He retracted that statement. But it wasn't until, like, obviously, like, the, the last dance where a lot of people changed their opinion. Mm. Was the last dance, like, over-sensationalized? Or would you agree to that? No, or was that was, actually was how Michael. it was? That was Michael. That was Michael was a rock. The, the, the Chicago Bulls were rock stars of the NBA. Whenever Chicago came to town, it was a sellout. Yeah. And that was 15 years in a row. Whenever you went, you couldn't get a ticket in Chicago. Um... Michael was the best player I'd ever seen play in my life. I remember sitting on a bench, and they were, he's going up and down, and he made a move, and I'm on the opposite bench, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm catch myself. But here's people that always say, why do you think Michael's the GOAT and not LeBron? LeBron is a magnificent player. He's a beast. LeBron is probably the GOAT of this time. But overall, it's Michael. Michael's the GOAT because – if there was no Michael, there wouldn't be a LeBron. Yeah. LeBron started weighing 23 because of Michael. Yeah. Okay? Now, people go, well, so what? Listen, Michael Jordan still sells shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he's been retired for 12 years, and you can't get Jordans. Mm. You can walk right down the street and get a pair of LeBrons yeah. at somebody's backyard sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If LeBron was the GOAT, People would be buying would, would be buying out those shoes. Yeah. Okay, just think about what I'm saying here. He's been retired 12 years. You can't get the Jordans, the real Jordans. You can't get them. No, you can't. 12 years later, 15 years later. Yeah. Think about what I'm saying, man. He's a cultural icon. Yeah. I want to yeah, shake your hand, but I'll hit the mic. So. <laughs> How about like was it the eye test when you saw him on the court? Like was it more like that? Like he's because you, you said he's so much. Was he so much better than everyone else? So like, much better yeah. than everyone else. Hershey yeah. Hawkins who I thought was a great player, who took me to the ring, helped me mm. to become a better player. Yeah. Poor Hershey, because Jordan gave it to him every <laughs> game. Yeah. They knocked us out. They swept us in the, in the um, Atlantic Division in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Knocked us right out, straight yeah. out. And Charles Jordan, Barkley was yeah, killing us. Charles them. Barkley was great, but yeah. he was nothing compared to Jordan. Not even close. <laughs> Not even – there was nobody compared to Jordan, man. Nobody. <laughs> you know, I, I was there, I'm telling yeah. you. Now, that's my opinion. That don't mean it has to be true. Yeah. But the best player these eyes have ever seen <laughs> is Michael <laughs> Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. That is the bottom line. Yeah. Crazy. Even in those years you were there, because I've heard Charles say it, because obviously there's two three-peats. He goes, the first three-peat, it showed why Michael was, like, the greatest ever. 
and the next three peak showed why he was the best in the league. Like that was a that was. He played three. Thing. He left the left to go play baseball. <laughs> No training, no nothing. Come back Sorry. and win three more. <laughs> Dominates the league. Come on, man. Come on, man. And yeah. you know, only like only Shaq and Kobe have won three. Yeah, and, crazy. and Chicago, no other teams won three besides like Celtics. Mm. You know, that's crazy. And Celtics in the sixties, not Magic's Lakers, not. Drew, listen the, to me. The best, guy, the best player. I, it was almost like he walks on air. Black Jesus, like, yeah. He, whatever, <laughs> whatever <laughs> move you that. throw at him, mm. yeah. whatever move you throw at him, he'll get you. He, 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 he moves. We, we you send double teams at him. People try to double him. Mm. He finds a way to score. Mm. He, he has his numbers every night, man. Mike was at that level, but how good was Charles Barkley? Because obviously you trained with him and stuff. Charles was very good. Charles, and I, I probably shouldn't say this, but Charles got to a level where he was a bit lazy because he was so talented. Yeah. Charles didn't have to work on his. And he, he knew he wasn't going to win titles. Like the nineties was. He didn't. He, you didn't see Charles go in there and go. Oh, I'm gonna get up 500 shots. He did it every now and again. You yeah. know what I mean. Mm. Like, but Jordan was religious at doing that before training and after training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Religious. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, it's that killer mentality. Yeah, and he had it. Yeah. And that's if there was no Jordan, there wouldn't be a LeBron. There wouldn't be a Kobe. Because these Hello. guys learn. I, Alan, they learn. Yeah. Yeah. From, if you listen to Allen Iverson in his speech, in his Hall of Fame speech, he yeah. said how he used to sit there on his mom's dresser and watch Jordan. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and he's he, he so mad at Detroit Pistons for roughing. But see, here's the, here's the one thing that people don't understand. Back then, back then, when Jordan was playing, there was no social media. Yeah. So he was famous around the world without Facebook and, and yeah. Instagram and YouTube. And YouTube. Yeah. There was nothing, man. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? 100%. Nothing. 100%. Yeah. And then also, also, I love LeBron. LeBron's the man, okay? Yeah. Number two? Yeah, because... <laughs> Who... We yeah. we'll can talk about off, ca- off yeah. camera, off camera. No, no, it's yeah, all right. Camera. But listen, <laughs> but here, here's, here's the thing. Basketball in the 90s, in the 80s, was two times more physical mm. than it is now. If you hit LeBron, he falls to the ground and grabs his head like somebody shot him. Jordan no, no. got hit by 20. They had the Jordan rules. Yeah. Anytime Jordan drives, put him on his ass. Yeah, 100%. You understand what I'm saying? So Jordan had to get yeah. in the weight room every offseason and bulk up because every team was going at him. Mm. Now, if you're the man and everybody's hitting you, these big guys are hitting you, yeah. and you're still the best in the league, imagine. <laughs> now, I'm not saying LeBron, uh, LeBron couldn't do it. He would have to change his mentality, though. Because right now, if you tap LeBron, he falls out like he's playing soccer or something. You know, he yeah. fell, oh, my yeah. leg, my, my back. It happened this morning. LeBron. Yeah, he went to the room and Giannis blocked him. He was complaining for like 10 seconds to the ref. See, yeah. I just saw it on Instagram. Yeah. Fine, fine, Jordan complaining. Yeah. Jordan get his get back and he'll but, come back at you. But, but you can make an excuse for that. The, the league's league. become it's softer. The for league. example. The league has become softer. Way right? more softer. Yeah. Kelly Oubre the other day blew a kiss to the other player when he, I don't know, dunked on him. I don't yeah. know what he did to him. Yeah. You got a technical for that, but they had they had to become a little bit softer because it was dangerous. Yeah, you see how Concussions they let us and fight, that. and that you yeah. can't do that now. No, yeah, no. you going around now. Now, now imagine all that on social because it's social media, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I keep telling you guys, yeah. social media. Put all that on social media now. Now basketball is banned yeah. everywhere yeah. else because they like to fight all the time. Yeah, you, can't, you can't get away with anything. There's you can't also, get away with anything. Technology like the yeah. cameras will come yeah. back. That's to right. You get a That's right. I blame Ron Artest, man. Yeah, for That's going up in the stands fall, and, and banging somebody. He <laughs> <laughs> smoked him. Ron wasn't hearing it. But you asked me a question. Who's the second best player? Yeah. My second best player? I'll probably say Magic. Yeah. Yeah. Magic was. That's five titles. Magic That's, has yeah. five titles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And five but, in nine years. He went but, to finals nine times. But Magic turned the LA Lakers into Showtime. Yeah. And he was 6'9, six, 6'10. Six, and you never found a guy that size who could handle the ball like him. Yeah. He, he evolved because he yeah. worked on his game. He worked on his shot. He got better. LeBron, again, I, I don't want to down, downplay LeBron. LeBron's the beast. Yeah. LeBron's the best right now. LeBron's the best. Mm-hmm. LeBron's the GOAT right now. How about yeah. Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant is a good, good defender, but he wasn't. <laughs> not LeBron. Yeah. He's not LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron's the best right now. Yeah. Who's the GOAT right now? LeBron James. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah. But overall, there's a couple of guys on that, on that Mount list, Rushmore. on that Mount Rushmore before yeah. LeBron. LeBron, LeBron's on there, he's on there. But you got to have Jordan. Yeah. You got to have Kareem, who yeah. 
you understand, who won all those titles, man. You know, you got to put those guys on there but because yeah. in their era, they were so much better than everybody then. Yeah. Now LeBron's so much better than everybody now. Yeah, mm-hmm. is Magic on your Mount Rushmore? One hundred percent. Larry Bird. Let me tell you a story about Larry Bird. <laughs> Larry Bird is one of the biggest trash talkers in the NBA. I remember. I've heard his three point contest. I remember <laughs> we played like we didn't. We played Boston. Yes. And they had two stadiums. They had the Boston Garden mm-hmm. yeah. with the parquet floor. So they had it was, but the that floor looked fantastic on TV, didn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, the raggediest gym. <laughs> no way. It was the worst. Had holes in the floor, no heating or air yeah, conditioning. Yeah, the heating. It story. was horrendous. And then they played in Connecticut, okay, mm-hmm. at another gym. All right, we ended up playing them in Connecticut, and I remember Larry. We we were we were we were up. I think we got up fifteen or something, and they took Larry out of the game. Took Charles out. I got to play I'm in the game or whatever. <sighs> he put Larry back in the game. Nah. Right? So Larry's running <laughs> <Larry's laughs> run up and down. Larry starts hitting threes. Zip. Yeah, yeah. Zip. Yeah. Zip. <laughs> running past the bench. Barkley, you better get your fat ass off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> got one oh, for you waiting on your bar. He was talking trash. <laughs> Listen. They, backed they got it back That's down. They got it back. They got it back to seven or eight. Took the young kids out. Put Barkley back in. Bird had forty five that game, and they ended up beating us Damn. in Connecticut. Yep. How hard yeah. did you write Bird? Yeah, because I don't think people understand how one of the yeah. best shooters yeah. I have ever. Yeah. Smartest. But see, here's the thing about Bird and Gaze. They can't jump yeah. that high, man. It's athleticism. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Tell them they can't jump. They're not athletic at all. Yeah. But they find a way. They're not quick. They can't. They're not fast. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They find a way to get numbers every single yeah, yeah. night. They work hard. That's a professional. Though. Yeah, hundred percent. Pass triple shoot. Yeah, Larry Bird. Yeah. They find a way to score the rock every single night. Yeah, I've heard his trash talking. Yeah, yeah big trash talking. That guy was crazy. Yeah, free throws with his eyes closed. <laughs> He's good. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So, how's life um post playing basketball? You know what I mean? I'm um, it's good for me. I, I play a lot of golf. Mm-hmm. I train a lot of kids over at Altona right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I coached. I've been Sydney with Andrew Gaze. I coached a couple of big V teams here in Melbourne. Yeah, uh, I coached at a high school. I won a little McDonald's Cup championship yeah. at Hanover. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just doing um, like in a small academy with mm-hmm. kids. I get sixty a week. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm just I'm just get, trying to get back, man. Trying to. Mm-hmm. Be in these the kids love world, yeah. yes. Be in the world, be Ooh. in the basketball world. These kids love it, you know. It, just give them because when when what I found here in Australia, as opposed to in America, you get more parents involved here, mm. like helping, helping more parents helping uh, coach kids, yeah. like okay. footy, basketball, yeah. but they don't know the sport. Like yeah. like a lot of fathers will coach on Saturday morning. But they're footy, they're, they're footy guys, yeah. but you can't find a coach because there's so many basketball teams. Yeah. So they help out. So but they're just helping out. They're just they helping out. They don't know game. the insides and outsides of basketball. Yeah. So that's sort of where I step in. And, and, and in America, when you're little, they teach you left hand and right hand. Yeah. Over here, they just give you the dominant hand. Exactly. So I try to give them left hand, right hand. Like some weaknesses. Yeah, but yeah. Fundamentals so, and stuff. Yeah. But it's good. It's been good for a while. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, you know, when you were coaching the NBL and you saw, like, these guys' mentalities and stuff, even just making NBL, what does it take to make it professional in sport? Because obviously, like, you did the college and now you've seen people that have come up and their work ethic, their mentality. You know, for us and some of our audience, we've got some young listeners who want to be professionals, you know, athletes. What does it actually take to make it that level? You got you, you to gotta have a dream first. You got to have a dream. You got to... When I say a dream, I don't mean a dream. I mean... A dream means you got to put that extra work in yourself. Your mom and dad can't say, get up and go shoot the basketball. Mm-hmm. You know you, you're not good. Or you're, you're somebody pushing you out the door. You, it has to come from in here. You got to want to get better. Mm-hmm. You got to want, and, and, and well, I ain't got a car. I can't make it to practice. Well, you got to get up and get on the bus. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you don't do that, you're never going to get there. Yeah. But if you start thinking like that, I'll find a way. If I want to be a basketball player, I'm going to find a way. I can't wait on my mom. Well, well, I I couldn't make it to practice today. My mom didn't bring me. Nah, 
Get on the phone and find a way to get to practice. So like a no excuse mindset. Get That's the work That's the only in. way you're going to make it to the top. Now you might make it to a, you know, you might make it to a mid level if you if you're messing around. But if you want to make it to the top, there can't be any, also, any excuse. How much work? Because some people train like here we do like Tuesday Thursday training just two days a week, and we hear like in the states people that train every single day. Let me let, like me, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Again, I'm old. Yeah, I don't look old, but I'm old, okay? Mm. <laughs> now, back then, in the early 80s and 90s, when we played basketball, and you hear old guys go, we played for eight hours. Yes, we played for eight hours every day. Let me tell you something. Why? Let me tell you why. Because we didn't have iPhones. Mm. We didn't have video games. Mm. We didn't have Apple computers. We came home. We went to the park. Yeah. My mom used to my, – our park was 10 minutes from my house. My mom used to walk down and yell my name. We had one big shed. Lenard, come home. Because there was nothing else to do, man. Yeah, that she, was it for us. She that knew was where it. you were. My kids go, you used to play with rocks when you were little, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> my kids joke around like that. But back then, there was nothing. There was no distractions. Yeah. I tell kids all the time when I talk to them, you guys think you train one hour a day, you're going to get better. Not, you ain't got a chance in hell, man, getting mm. better. One hour a day. You got to get in that gym three or four hours a day, every single day. And guess what? If you, you're the best player in the gym, that's the wrong gym for you. Mm. Get into a gym where somebody can crack you and bust you yeah. so you can get better. Because mm -hmm. um, there's actually a book that we're reading, and the guy says, you can't just say, I want to be a basketball player. You have to change your mind and go, I am a basketball that's right. player. That's right. And then from there, you start working on the processes. And that's like right. you were saying, you didn't actually think about – being in the NBA until right. like it actually became tangible. Yeah. Mm. So you're more focused on the processes yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And getting there. But yeah, man, like yeah. if people knew that from the beginning and yeah. nobody had given it. It'd be a lot easier. Yeah. It'd be a lot easier. But I, 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 today I see kids, like I see, in the, there's a couple of things that I don't like, but it's okay because I understand it's that time. But I see kids going on YouTube and trying all these different moves or whatever and they'll go to the gym and try it and they go to the next move so many mm. there's so many moves on youtube i see it all the time 50 million if you go moves yeah. 50 million moves yeah right you're never going to get great at number one number two number three yeah. you gotta yeah. keep moving it's on it's because yeah. they all want that highlight reel they all want their yeah, mates that's to right them. They, they, all, they, they all they the see the guys doing their thing and they all want to be there but in order for them to get there, you got to start from the bottom, man. Yeah, that's what it's turned And they also into. get bored with doing the fundamentals and stuff. Yeah. So they're always like, I know the guy Tim Grover, who trained Dwayne Wade, Michael Jordan, Kobe, and he goes, the issue with these guys is, like, not those guys, but other guys in the NBA, they keep wanting to change routines. Yeah. They do one month of one thing, they're like, no, nah, I want to change it. Yeah. Kobe, Michael will do the same drill twice a day for 18 years or 15 years, and that's what... That's yeah. why the the certain shots that's unguardable. That's right. But the other players, baseline spin, yeah. the turn around, mm. same shot, five hundred shots. Other yeah. guy, let me change it up. I do the handles and. Yeah. You know, on that point there, I was watching a video by ESPN, and they were speaking about the exact same thing you're talking about. People go on YouTube and then practice this highlight so they can perfect it on the court. Yeah. And one of the interesting things ESPN said is like scouts are dying in the league at the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So people, what they'll do is they'll practice that one Jamal Crawford crossover. So then when, they, when they can do it in a pickup game, they can be seen all over the news. So then yeah. instead of scouts going over to their game, they'll be like, oh, that guy's done it before. Yep. But you know what the problem is, yeah? Just like you said, he can only do that one Jamal Crawford That's crossover. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? He can't do a layup. He can't sink shots and all That's that right. kind of stuff. So it's yeah. like double whammy there. It's yeah. interesting. I've um, got a question for you. What's your thoughts with um, everything that's happened like this year with like um, the Black Lives Matter movement, like in the NBA when they cancelled it for a whole, like a good period of time. How does it feel being like, obviously like an African-American playing in the NBA and seeing all this, you know? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was the right thing to do. I think the NBA have, they have a great commissioner. Adam Silver is yeah, shout out caught to up. He, 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 you know, he, he listens. Yeah. You know, you, and he takes action. Yeah, and he takes action. I think the best the best thing about the best thing about guys taking a stance is, yeah, we, we go out here and perform for you guys and make you guys happy, but you won't hear what we're we're complaining about or yeah. what we're crying about. You know what I mean? So we decide we're just gonna stop everything yeah. until you listen to what we gotta say. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought that was fantastic. And then you see 
the words on their on the back of their jerseys and around Black the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, so fantastic, man. I, yeah. I thought it was fantastic. And, I, I, and with all the stuff that happened with, with George Floyd or whatever and, and the riots and all that stuff, people, no, no one likes riots, but that had to happen. It had to happen, man, because if it didn't, it just would have gone on and on and on again. You know what I mean? So yeah. people know now if you do it, and it's, it's may, it might happen, but it didn't happen as much because you don't hear about it. Mm-hmm. But if you do something like that again, we're going to burn your city down. Okay? And when people in power starts thinking about money, then they go, okay, hold up. They start to listen. Wait a minute. We, yeah. we got to stop this because if, if one of our boys killed another black guy, then I'm going to lose my business. So stop. You know what I mean? Because if you don't do something radical, and I call it radical, but it's not radical, but if you don't do something out of the ordinary, out of the ordinary then you're back at the same yeah. same point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that documentary, LA 92. Yeah, 1992, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, those I've seen riots. It, yeah. Like, they literally had to... I don't understand this. I don't think people get it, like, especially around white Americans, mm. for example. Not all of them, but the right. ones that are opposed to the Black Lives Matter movement and all that is... Um, people are just asking to be treated equal. I don't right. understand that. Right. How Not better or anything. How, 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 I didn't get it. Like, right. Do you see me as a human? Nah. Yeah. Or we take it back. No, yeah. I, I don't understand the whole mentality behind it. asking for much. You, you, know, you know what's happened, though? Now, Donald, Donald Trump was the worst president we've in America has ever had, I thought. Mm. But it's a blessing that he he was there for four years because... He's brought to light all the things that were under the table. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now everyone sees. Yeah. Now you see, because, like, people would always ask, is Australia racist? And I say, there's racism everywhere. But in Australia, it's not in your face. They don't, like in America, if you live in a black city, like, in, we live in Atlanta, okay, and there's counties outside Atlanta. So it's like 10 minute drive that away, and it's Fulton County, and it's all white people, and they're a little bit redneckish. Mm. So you know where not to go, and they know where not to go. Okay. Yeah. So, but over here, I deal with white people all the time, and everyone's got a smile in their face. Mm. But as soon as you turn around, a couple of them are sticking you in yeah, your back, and I, they don't think I know that they're yeah. crazy. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the one thing about me is I'll tell them though. I've done it before. I yeah. look, man, I know you I know you're racist. Get your ass out of here. I, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bother me to say yeah. it. You know what I mean? Because today you're still encountering that's these right. problems? Yeah. What's that? Are you still dealing like with these problems or have you encountered people like that? I haven't encountered a lot of it here in Australia. Okay. And, and I didn't encounter a lot of it in, in, in Atlanta because again, we lived in the suburbs sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh my grandfather owned his own farm, right? He had 90 acres, okay? He had cows and horses, and he, he farmed. He had apples and pears, and then he had corn and peas, and he did it all. This was in the, in the 70s, okay? So as young kids, my mom, my mom's family, it was my mom's dad, there was 10 of them. So all the kids would go down in the summertime mm-hmm. and help my grandfather, Right, and then stay on the farm, right? And we'd help pick peas and pick corn and stuff like that, you know yeah. what I mean? And apples. And my grandmother would then cut them up and put them in jars and save them for the wintertime. Yeah. They made soap, and they would go sell their fruit to the farmer's market. That's how they made their money. Yeah. Okay? So my grandfather was a well-known farmer. And he was an old guy, and he was a deacon in a church, and he was well-respected. And I remember... So this is the first time I sort of seen how they were treated. There, my, back then, you used to pay for life insurance. The insurance man would come by and pick up your money. Yeah. All right? So, so like, we had a company called Central Life. And every month on the 18th, the insurance man would come by. You'd pay your $20, and he'd write it in the book, and he'd sign it, stamp it or whatever, and he'd go to the next house. That's how you paid your insurance. Remember, that was in the 70s. Yeah, so there right. was no, no internet, okay? You couldn't, direct debit. Right, there was a direct debit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this young guy, young insurance guy, nice suit on, he, he couldn't, be, couldn't have been any more than 22, 21. My grandfather was 70. Yeah. Hmm. 
And my grandfather said, yes, was calling this guy, yes, sir. And and then, and, and so I had an older cousin. My older cousin said, who called my grandfather, Papa. Papa, why do you call that young guy, sir? He should be calling you, sir. He goes, that's the way it is around here. If you're white, they, they, you have to call him, sir. Mm-hmm. And that's the first oh, time wow. I, was, I was small, but I caught it. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I caught it. And I always thought about every time I went to the farm, I'd always think about the young guy coming by. And if ever I saw him, I'd always be mad at him. But I, I don't know why I was mad at him. Yeah. That was the system. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're and sort of mad at the system. I'm, I was mad. I, well, I, I'm, mad, I'm, I'm mad at the system now. Mm. But I was mad at the white guy back yeah. then mm. because my grandfather was calling him sir when he should have been calling my grandfather sir. Yeah. You understand what I'm 100%, saying? 100%. Yeah. So out yeah. of respect for older people. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't care what color you are. It only makes sense. Yeah. It only yeah, makes for sense for you to. And he, my my grandfather's name was Tom. He goes, Tom, you got the money today? And my grandfather would go, yes, sir, Mr. I'm going. What the? Yeah, <laughs> weird, if I, exactly. Now you put me there now, I'm punching this guy in his face. <laughs> yeah. Quit. Yeah. You know, so that, but that's the way it was, man. So that's why I think things evolve and like. Riot thing had to happen and Black Lives Matter had to happen, man, because if yeah. it didn't... But it's good yeah. the social media, like in 92, there was nothing. Now in the basketball games, on the court, it says Black Lives Matter on the yeah. thing. Yeah, and yeah. then people are taking a knee, a knee, even in the NFL. Yeah. You know, Soccer, so everywhere. Tennis, stopped. everything. MLB have like... They don't have a lot of Africans. They stopped and they just everything was just stopping. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the the States, Spreading the, awareness is so much easier. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Even yeah. NASCAR, yeah. bro. Nasca stopped. The, the, yeah. Um, what's his name? Bubba. Bubba Watson. Watson. Yeah. They put that. They put that. Yeah. News. And didn't he win the next day or something? No, no, he came. He, he came won. Back. He won straight after after a month or so. I don't know if he won. I just, yeah. I just saw that. He's story. driving for Michael Jordan now. Oh wow. Yeah. That's Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan's yeah. a yeah. icon, See, man. You know, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a funny point you mentioned because I was listening to a podcast and Kevin Durant was on there, um, and he was speaking about one of the points that you mentioned before about how the league now. You know what I mean? Players have to take care of themselves first because it's a business league. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it goes, there's no excuses for people out there to go and say like, oh, but there's billionaires and all this kind of stuff and capitalism has gone on and all that kind of stuff. And goes, look at Michael Jordan, for example. Mm. You know what I mean? This guy was a player like us. Yep. Like he played, he grew up, went to college, did this and did that. You know what I mean? And look at him now. You know what I mean? Why can't we, because he was talking about the mindset, he goes, why do I have to be just a player? Yep. Why can't I be a business owner? Yep. Why can't I own a franchise like Charlotte yep. Hornets and all that yep. kind of stuff? And it's it's one of those like mentalities that a lot of us have to put. It, it's like that they blame everything but themselves. Yep. You know what I mean? Why isn't the world like this? Yep. You know what I mean? But why can't you be like this? That's right. Why can't you own a business like Michael Jordan? Yeah. But yeah. Thank you very much for watching the podcast. Honestly, thanks. Don't yeah. forget to like Gold. and share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check us out on all our social media platforms as well. Uh, we want to thank Leonard Copeland for yeah gracing us with this uh, this uh, podcast. But um, I wanted to say opportunity to shout out your camp. Uh, yeah, that's school holiday camps at Altona. Uh, we had 150 and 160 kids last week, which was fantastic. By the way, I'm throwing out the first pitch in Altona on Monday. Okay. Damn. Apparently. Okay. Nice. Not, a lot, not a lot of people, but yeah. What time? What time? I think it's seven o'clock on Monday. So if you're anywhere in Altona, come to the baseball field. I'm Done. working on my even my um, your podcast. Yeah. Podcast will be up soon. Hopefully, the Alley Oop Show uh, with with uh, Andrew Gaze. Uh, we're working on it. We're gonna get it back going. We'll give some promotion. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. Share it around and it's out. But yeah, we'll get we'll get that camp to 300 kids. Hopefully, and then <laughs> thank you guys for having me. It's been real fun. You ask a lot of questions. My mouth is dry, <laughs> but I'm happy I came. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, appreciate man. It. All right, bro. Legend.